All right. Well, it is 6.30, so we should probably get started. Um, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. If I think Jack is here, I'm sure maybe his camera was on earlier. So, um, yeah. So we are, um, I think we're good to go. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay. Um, great. There's Jack. Great. <clears throat> uh, well, welcome everybody. Uh, it is delightful to be back with you all uh, here for the next um, session, the next term. Uh, and I just want to take a little liberty here as the mayor to uh, welcome, uh, well, uh, welcome back uh, uh, Connor and Donna. Um, and also welcome, oh, and and uh, welcome back uh, Jennifer. Um, uh, and, and also welcome to Carrie, new to the council. Uh, and uh, we're just delighted to, uh, to have you all here. Um, right too. Okay, so, oh, and um, I actually, as long as I'm um, welcoming folks, I also wanna um, just thank all of the uh, candidates who did run. Uh, thank you for um, putting yourselves out there and um, uh, making our democracy better. And, uh, also, I want to thank all the voters for uh, coming out and, uh, um, yeah, raising your voice uh, in the city. That's great. All right. So um, just to get to it here. So uh, we have, uh, we're going to start, well, I'm going to call the, this meeting to order. I'm going to, uh, let's talk about the agenda. Um, any um, changes to the agenda? Yes, Bill. Um, I think we might want to do a swearing in. Oh yeah, good call. It's funny to think of this as you know doing a <laughs> Zoom swearing in, but okay. Um, uh, the newly elected, all, I mean, all the people who were elected or re-elected should be re-sworn in. I think and we I all think, did it separately did because we were oh, here. Okay. Oh, everyone Connor got it. didn't. Wow. Well. Have... Um, John, Jennifer did. are you on? Do you have opinions That's... about this? <laughs> Crystal's on. Uh, yep. Oh, um, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I have um, a few that came into the office and, and did that, but I still need to swear in Jennifer, Connor, and Anne. Yeah, I'm in that group. Do we want to do that like collectively? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> One. Okay. So you can raise your right hand. Been there. Yep. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont and that you will not directly or indirectly do any act or thing injurious to the constitution or government thereof? So help you God under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. I do. I do. Okay. There's one more. <laughs> do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully execute the office of city councilors slash mayor for the city of Montpelier and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of your judgment and ability, according to law, so help you God, under pains and perjury. I do. I do. I do. Lovely. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So sworn. And thank you, <laughs> and thank you for keeping us uh, on track here, Bill. Uh, that's good. So, um, all right. So now, uh, any Can I go now? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so um, any changes to the agenda? Uh, okay, I see no one speaking up about changes to the agenda. Um, so we'll, with that, we'll consider the agenda approved. And so on to general business and appearances. This is an opportunity um, for any member of the public or um, council, I suppose, to uh, make a comment or ask questions about anything that is otherwise not on our agenda. If you do have something that pertains to our agenda, uh, then uh, we will allow time for public comment when those items come up. Uh, but, oopsies, <laughs> but if you are, um, but if you have something that's not related to the agenda, um, now is the time. And just a comment for everybody: if you would change uh, your name so that it reflects your first and last name, so that we can have a, um, a record of who you are, and if you would also um, uh, say where you are from, um, that would be helpful. 
and uh, try to keep your comments to about two minutes. Um, that'd be great. All right, thank you. Uh, and I, so I saw a hand first from uh, Jody Pedersen. Um, so we'll go Jody and then to Sarah Lipton. Okay, go ahead, Jody. Hi, you are still muted. Unmute, thank you. Yep. I guess I did them both at once. I thought I did it. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mayor Watson and city councilors. So, and city manager. So my comment, uh, thank you very much for scheduling next week's um, intervention by Paul Costello. I think that's gonna be a, a great idea. And I also wanted to speak up and say, I was hoping to urge our city councilors to consider holding meetings with their districts now and again in order to increase transparency, get to know the people living in your districts and also consider using the CAN area, the capital area network email chains to communicate better with all of us so that you, know, you can keep us posted about what's going on. Thank you. Great, thank you for that suggestion. Um, and uh, uh, Sarah Lipton, go ahead. Hi, Council Mayor Watson. Thank you for letting me speak for a moment. I'm the director of the Montpelier Senior Activity Center for the city of Montpelier. And I just wanted to make a brief mo um, memo basically to let you know that we're doing a really big um, March for Meals campaign to raise awareness and funds for our Meals on Wheels program which our Feast Senior Meals um, program runs. It's the 50th anniversary of Meals on Wheels nationally and the Older Americans Act, which provides a portion of the federal funding that runs our program, but certainly not enough funding to actually run our program. So we've got quite a series of events online. We've got a, meals, um, a meal pickup, curbside pickup on March 25th. And I wanted to specifically invite all of you, if you're interested, to do a guest delivery of a Meals on Wheels route during the week of March 21st. I thought it might be really interesting for you to have the opportunity to, live, to deliver meals to your constituents. So if you're interested in doing that, please reach out to myself or Kim Myers at the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. And I believe uh, thanks is in order for later in the agenda when a possible proclamation might be um, accepted. So thank you for that as well. <laughs> Thanks for letting me speak. Great, thank you. And uh, Peter, Peter Kelman, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I'm Peter Kelman. I live on Mountain View Street in District 3. And I would first like to congratulate our two newly elected District 3 City Council representatives, Jennifer Morton and Carrie Brown. As CAN coordinator, for the Mountain View neighborhood, I look forward to establishing regular communication among both of you and the 30 families who live in that neighborhood, just to underscore what Jody uh, got in and said before I did. The ultimate goal of such communication is to facilitate greater resident engagement and trust in city government. And the proximate goals are one, to establish a more personal, more effective, and more timely way for the city council to keep residents informed about matters on which they, the city manager's office, city departments, and the various city committees are working. And two, to assist our city council representatives to learn about and understand the specific concerns and priorities of the residents of the neighborhoods in the district they are representing. I want all the members of the city council to note my use of the term representatives, because I wanna underscore how important it is that elected officials like you listen to, hear, understand, and communicate clearly and in a timely manner with those who have elected them. That's what a democracy is all about. And I believe it is the best way to restore faith in government. I'd also like to congratulate Mayor Watson on her reelection and all of you, especially Bill Frazier for the strong support the voters gave in approving the municipal and school budgets, as well as the various bond issues, especially the somewhat contentious bond to enable the city to purchase the Elks Club. 
Now the hard work begins. I'm certain that you are all aware that Montpelier is becoming increasingly gentrified and unaffordable for many, even those who have lived here for many years and or work here. Unfortunately, this is no accident. It is a trend that has been nurtured by the 2016 Economic Development Strategic Plan, which explicitly called for Montpelier to distinguish itself from Barry with its lower cost of living. It seems to me that the Elks Club provides us with a unique opportunity to set a new community development direction for Montpelier, one that values, welcomes, and embraces all kinds of diversity. But this can only happen if the Elks Club project, as it seems to be called now, is conceived, planned, and executed in service to this new vision of inclusiveness. So let's not just talk the talk, let's walk the walk. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And thank you uh, all uh, who spoke for those um, great thoughts and suggestions. Uh, anyone else? Steve Whitaker. Uh, Steve, go ahead. Uh, first, I'd like to suggest, uh, oh, congratulations to the newly elected members. Um, uh, I'd like to suggest that public comments and uh, issues raised, there be a formal process for following up on those, that they don't just get to be swept under the rug, a nod and a, oh, thank you, and we'll hear it again you know, next time, that you create a logging system for issues that people raise and uh, so that there's some accountability on whether they got followed up or ignored. Uh, issues that need to be put on the agenda for future discussion are a increasing list of public records that turn up to be missing. Uh, I raised them prior. I won't go into them now, but it needs a discussion. Uh, we can't have public records disappearing that are necessary for accountability and planning. Um, I had campaign signs stolen, uh, and I asked the police department to investigate, and they ignored those requests. Uh, they didn't get any idea on who brought some and delivered them to the police station. Uh, that's a crime to remove campaign signs. I won't delve into that, but it needs to be uh, raised. It's uh, unequal treatment, uh, potential bias by the police department. You heard prior that a person's vehicle was damaged by a snowplow. You were told that it was full, the city was fully insured, they would be made whole. Uh, it turns out on further investigation that the operator did live, leave the scene, uh, that the operator did not have his driver's license with him, that, and it turns out that the city's insurance is stiffing these, this young working couple uh, their own insurance covered the damage except for the deductible and the city's claiming sovereign immunity. I'm encouraging that couple to sue because or settle because that's gross negligence when you're not watching where you're going, driving a grader and that punctures sovereign immunity. But you were told that he didn't leave the scene and you were told that they would be taken care of or had been and neither of those things are true. Um, Transit center restrooms continue to be closed during lunch hour in violation of the lease. Uh, I've raised that repeatedly, and it's unconscionable that the city council has not discussed it and not taken any action to remedy it. Uh, the city manager contract, I've learned through a public records request that this, neither the city nor the manager was represented by council while substantial changes were made to that contract to in effect protect the golden parachute provisions. Those, uh, that's a very serious issue. Uh, the memo to the council is claimed as exempt uh, as contract negotiations, even though those contract negotiations have concluded and the contract has been approved, that may be a violation of law. Secondly, the City manager cannot act as the head of the agency when he's concealing his own record relating to his own contract. Uh, I raised that conflict issue and was ignored. It was brushed aside. 
these are issues that the council needs to take up and deal with. Um, I guess, oh, uh, will I be able to speak during the police review committee about uh, re actions related to police uh, purchases and unplanned purchases, massive purchases and grant applications? Or no, do I need to do that? that? You need to do that now because that's not pertinent to that particular item. Okay. All right. So I've gotten recent records request responses that detail the city uh, hiring an architect firm to design a new dispatch center or PSAP, uh, none of which has been approved by council, nor was it even in the Televate report. So there's absolutely no justification for that uh, expense or action beyond authority of the council. So I, I'm raising that because there's hundreds of thousands, three or $400,000 in grant applications and additional debt and claims of trade secrets in the deliverables by the architect. Our police chief and apparently thinks he's a new entrepreneur and uh, he needs to operate according to a plan with transparency and council approval of his actions. He's not a, a loose cannon allowed to be going and spending the public's money uh, in that manner. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone. So uh, we are gonna um, move on then uh, to the consent agenda. Um, is uh, so just so folks know, I will um, need to recuse myself from item H. So if um, if you could, um, if they're in the motion, we could um, remove item H, that'd be great. Also, I do wanna remind folks too, to try to keep your comments about two minutes, that would be excellent. Um, all right, uh, Jack. I would ask that we <clears throat> separate uh, item H from the consent agenda and that we also uh, separate uh, item B, the minutes from the consent agenda. I noticed uh, a question in the minutes and I sent an email to the clerk, but, uh, but he's not here tonight. And so I would ask that we take that up at, at our next meeting so we can get my question resolved. And I'll second. Oh, is that, a, is that a motion for the remainder, Jack? And, and, and I, that's, I was just about to say, and I, and I move the rest, the remainder of the consent agenda. Uh, I think there was already a second by Donna, unless, Connor, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a quick question. I don't think we would need to take it off, but it's for Bill. Um, read the parking meter piece of the consent agenda, and it said the recommendation was to go with option number four, which I would agree with. Um, I just want to make sure if we approve the uh, parking meter piece of it, uh, the plan is still to have coin operated meters. Um, with yes, ab yeah, absolutely. In fact, that's what op option four is yep. our coin operated only. Uh, and it would actually uh, get rid of the, or eliminate the credit card option because of the cost of processing those and the cost of the 5g connection and the cost of the battery. So we would have only coins and the park mobile app. That's all I needed. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other comments on the consent agenda? And this includes the public. Okay. So um, without, uh, without uh, anybody raising their hand there. Um, so any further discussion on the consent agenda minus H and B. Okay, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, so the consent agenda passes. Um, if we could, I'd like to take up item H right now. I just need to um, recuse myself from that. So I'm gonna turn things over to Jack. Um, so as, I assuming, What's that? So yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay, go ahead, Jack. Item H is uh, is a proposal for uh, to sign a resolution to accept a grant agreement from the Vermont Community Development Program 
for the city to subgrant to Habitat for Humanity for a planning and fe feasibility study. Does anyone want to be heard on that item? It is on the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Well, uh, Don. I'll make a motion that we accept the resolution to fund. Um, I was trying to read the whole thing. I think somebody had their hand raised, Jack. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'll. Uh, well, let's get the motion and second in, and then I'll uh, recognize the uh, speaker. Yes, my motion would be that we accept the agreement, grant agreement resolution. I'll second that. Okay, uh, Dave Delcor. Is there a grant amount? Um, let me see, do we have uh, someone here who can answer that question? Zach, Zach Watson, I see you've got your hand up. Uh, yes, so the, um, we're the sub grantees, but the grant agreement was for $50,000. Oh, thanks. Any other dis discussion or are we ready to vote on this? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve uh, the grant resolution for the Habitat for Humanity Pl Planning and Feasibility Study. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, you've adopted uh, item H and I'll Turn the chair back to the mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so um, uh, so uh, we need to do a whole bunch of things that are pretty typical for the beginning of a new year, a uh, new um, council year. So for this, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Bill with the organizational. Um, or the, the orientation really. Um, oh, I'm sorry, um, Carolyn, um, I, I'm not sure. Carolyn, do, what's your last name? Shapiro, Carolyn Shapiro. Okay. Carolyn Shapiro. Yes. yes, and I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the process, but when uh, we were on the consensus agenda for the uh, Gate Park murals, yeah. and just, does that mean that it all it got has. approved? Yes. Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm the new. I'm here and I didn't know. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's all good. Process. So thank you very much. I really appreciate that. No problem. I'll, I'll okay. be saying goodbye. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Um, Linda Berger, I see you have a hand up. Yes, I'm sorry. I was here to talk. I, I had no idea that it was just, there was going to be no discussion. It was just the consent agenda. I had some questions about it. Um, and so now I feel uh, stupid and shut out. Um, from being able to discuss it. Well, if you'd like to ask your questions now, that's certainly welcome. Okay. Um, I, I've seen Carol, I have no doubt that Carolyn will do a wonderful job spearheading this project. My concern is just that uh, the, she came to the commission with the uh, idea of, of doing these murals, which is great being initiating something but I think there's other artists in town that should have an opportunity to uh, possibly receive the stipend possibly spearhead this um, it feels a lot like the signs that were put up around town and people weren't aware of how that happened or how the budget budgeting happened for that um, it just feels like a closed process like an insider process. And I, it's not that I have anything against Carolyn's work. She shared a, a number of photos of the work that she's done and it's impressive, but I just think to, to benefit her as well as the commission, it should be a bit more open in how this is done. Um, thank you, uh, Linda, I, I appreciate that. Um, Rob Hitzig is, um, I believe, a member of the uh, Public Art Commission. Um, Rob, go ahead. Hey, um, thank you, Anne, and thank you, Linda. Um, yes, I just uh, just as a point of clarification, I'm with the Public Art Commission, and Carolyn came to us asking for our support in a proposal that she was working through the state 
for painting the columns at on Route Two, the uh, the highway columns, and um, we supported the project. It hasn't been funded at all yet. There's no funding involved, and she was planning on working with the schools to do this. So it's not um, anybody in particular that's been selected to paint the columns and there um, isn't an actual drawing at this point. We're just, uh, we'll be reviewing proposals when, when that time comes, but nothing's been selected. And in addition, the uh, Public Art Commission is supporting the project in that we want to make a gateway uh, murals on those and, and that'll be a more public process, finding the artists to do the rest of the columns. So Carolyn's just gonna, that just proposed a couple of the columns and the commission will be looking for artists to do the rest. So that's still, it's still being worked on. It's I nothing's, guess, nothing's been finalized. Thank you, Rob. That's really, that's very interesting. Um, and Linda, did you have another question that you wanted to uh, ask or respond? I have a question about when I read the background information on the uh, public art proposal. Um, I guess it doesn't totally, in my mind, doesn't totally match what was just presented. Um, so I, I just think it needs to be, maybe it's just me reading it and being an outsider and not understanding. Um, Well, so just for um, clarification, um, Rob, uh, when does the uh, Public Art Commission meet? Our next meeting, I think, is the 24th of this month. I could check here. Okay. And um, these, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's the 23rd. The 23rd from 5 to 6.30. Okay. And, and um, that will be posted. The Zoom link will be posted. Okay. And all website. those... Meetings are open to the public? Yes. Okay. And uh, great. So I guess I would encourage um, uh, you, Linda, or anyone who is interested in that process to attend uh, those meetings. And um, it sounds like there will be a process for the remainder of the, um, yeah, of those there, there, uh, columns. So. Yeah. There's about 12 for, I don't know exactly how many columns, but Carolyn was, was just planning on working with the, high, the schools to paint two or three of them, and the rest will be open for public process. Okay, great, thank you. So the three, the two or three were approved by the state, is that what you're saying? And we don't have any say over that, but we would somehow have say over the remainder of them? Um, so I'm gonna, um, yeah. I'm gonna let you, well, actually no, go ahead and answer the question and then we're, we're probably gonna move on after that. Right, right, you could um, come to our meetings, but, uh, Yes, it, uh, Carolyn's working with the schools to paint a couple of them and the rest will be open for a public process of selecting artists. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so we are gonna move on to- um, Oh, again, it feels the like the people just- no, so, we're gonna, so we're moving on, um, thank you. Um, so um, I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, to Bill for the organizational um, meeting orientation stuff. Um, well, so the organizational meeting, I think, was really intended to be a, a heading for all the things that happen underneath it. Oh, it okay. A colon for all those next next things. There's nothing specific about the organizational meeting. Uh, we are in the process of updating the the annual handbook. Uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. Councilmember Brown got the first one hot, hot off the press. Um, but we will have them for all of you. And uh, certainly um, I will mention one thing about organization or orientation is we are, um, Mary from our office is prepared, is working on scheduling tours for council members Morton and Brown uh, to, to see our various sites. And what we will do is let everybody else know when those are happening. So if other people want to join in and also be on the tour of the council members, and then we'll post those um, so that we don't have any illegal meetings. Um, so, you know, members of the public may join or attend as well, but I really therefore the two new, uh, newest council members, but uh, obviously 
they're always valuable no matter how many times you've been on the tour. So that is something that's happening. Um, other than that, I think it's that that was really a heading meant to have all of these others as subheadings. So. Okay, fair enough then. Um, all right, well, we need to um, elect some officers and we, I was kind of going off of um, the, before the election uh, assumption that Jack was the president sort of holding over from, from last time. Um, but uh, so we need to elect uh, or appoint uh, president, vice president and parliamentarian. Um, anyone interested in serving in those roles, Donna? I was going to nominate Jack for council president if he would accept the nomination. I would accept the nomination. Thank you. I'll second it. You did a, did a good job filling in the last couple of months. Great. Right. <laughs> Thank um, you. Should we take them up each individually, I suppose? That's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, Tana, that was, that was a motion. I mean, I can do a slate if you want. I, I just, don't want to exclude whoever might be interested in other positions. Sure, fair enough. Uh, well, let's let's talk about the other positions. Anyone interested in vice president? Uh, Donna, I'm interested. Okay. <laughs> um, I nominate Donna. Okay, for vice president. Okay, um, and so we're, I think we'll maybe do this all as one package then perhaps uh, parliamentarian it was jack now to be fair i mean it could be jack again but it's probably better if we can spread it out um i mean if that's okay with you jack oh yeah i'm happy to do it but i'm happy to have someone else do it too and i think there's value to having uh having it spread out yeah uh, carrie do you have those skills oh uh, you know um maybe but maybe not at my very, very first time at city council. <laughs> so I, I, Fair I, enough. I, yeah, I, I'll well, do I mean, if you twist my arm, but um, I'd, I'd be more comfortable getting a feel of how things work before I took that on. I mean, they're Robert's rules of order, you know, yeah. and I have a cheat sheet and John Odom is the king. So he's always there to help. Go ahead, be bold. <laughs> 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 well, either I'm, um, yeah. Whatever your preference is, Carrie. Or maybe Connor if wants, wants to do it. it. Maybe he has hidden desires. Connor, Lauren. I'm okay. Jennifer. You know, I just want to like, you know, nurture Carrie as she's starting up here. I think it'd be great if she slid in. You know? ah, okay. <laughs> Lauren, any thoughts? Very happy to support Carrie. Uh, I mean, if <laughs> if we really if we really need someone, I, I could do it as long as Jack could whisper in my ear all the parliamentarian <laughs> rules. <laughs> when I mess up, but it's, it's a very low, um, low stakes thing, Carrie. There's a lot of people who have a lot of the expertise on council that can, it's a team effort really. All right, um, I'm, uh, I'm willing to take it on. Okay. Thanks. All right, mm -hmm. so uh, Jack is president, Donna as vice president, Carrie as parliamentarian. Um, Donna, that's, is that, just to clarify, that's your motion? Yes. And Connor, that is your your second is okay with that? Okay. Yes. Any further discussion about this? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, great. All right. So uh, rules of procedure. We need to readopt our rules. Um, Bill, is there anything you want to say about this before we do it? I I'm not sure it needs. No, I'm, I mean, we, we have the rules that, you know, are typically the same from year to year, but, um, you know, obviously each council can adopt them and adapt them as they see fit. So if there's anything that you, you don't like, um, that the, the purpose for having it adopted each year is that this, and the same with the ethics policy, is that this particular group of seven has said, yes, these are our rules for this year. We're not bound by a prior council's rules. So, um, the, the current edition was provided, but it's really up to you whether you want to amend them. It's your, it's your own operating rules and expectations. Sorry, you just got very quiet there at the end, at least in my... Oh, so I just said it's your own operating rules and expectations, um, yeah. you know, for yourselves. Right. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to go uh, Jack first, just to give it a start, and then we'll go to, to you, uh, Peter Kalman. Um, Jack, go ahead. I move that we readopt the council rules of procedure as uh, as they're presented in the packet. Okay, um, Peter, go ahead. Second. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Peter Kalman, uh, uh, Mountain View Street. Um, if I have the latest version, uh, I just want to call your attention to item eight. Any items discussed the agenda under the heading of general appearances should be limited to not more than oh, 10, ten minutes. minutes. Yeah. All right. So. I just would like to suggest to you that you make it five as someone who has a lot of trouble saying anything in under in two or under like <laughs> most people do. Could we compromise and say five? Thank you. <laughs> Donna, go ahead. I, I tried to get that to five and was voted down every time. Oh. And the fact of it is as much as we say two, most people talk five minutes or more. And so if we say five, I want us to really keep them to five. Okay. Because it makes yeah, our I mean, meeting so much longer. And, you know, I think people can be condensed. Yeah. Okay. A lot in two minutes. But Fair enough. Five minutes. We, I'll make it. Um, uh, any other thoughts on that? Yes, Carrie. Can, can I just clarify, is this for members of the public who are offering comments on things in the agenda? That's what we're talking about here? Um. Well, you know, what's interesting is it says any items should take no more than yeah. 10 minutes. Um, that's not necessarily per person, it's just the item. Yes, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, it's it's items under general business and appearances. So if, if three people all come and they wanted to talk about the same thing, that would also be subject to that time limit, right. the way I read it. Yeah, well, then they'd have to, we'd have to vote to extend the time um okay well i'm that's fine with me i i rarely um I, I mean i have held people to it but mostly when there's like a lot of uh people wanting to speak um but uh i'm i'm down for that peter have you are you done with your um your hand still up i just wanted to um make sure you're done um linda Berger, go ahead uh Yes, I was trying to talk about the Public Arts Commission uh, item. I believe that I was speaking where the discussion was less than the amount listed here and and you were not receptive to discussing it. So I'm not understanding these rules, I guess. Yeah, well, so that's a good, good question. So typically the way that um, we work is that um, you have like any member of the public has some amount of time. It has been two minutes, but we can make it five and that's fine um, to say whatever they would like to say. And then um, there may be a response. There may not be. Um, but we typically don't get into like a back and forth. Like we, it's not really like a conversation. Um, there's an opportunity to make a statement or ask questions and then there's an opportunity for a response, but that's, that's it. And so that's why I interrupted you um, earlier because I, I would like to avoid um, having back, back and forths because um, we find that that's often like not very um, helpful and, and not uh, easy to, to, to manage actually. So I guess um, so that's 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 so that that's exactly so I'm gonna if, um so that's that's why um we are doing what we're we're doing, and uh, and that's why um, I'm gonna let you speak one more time and then um, we're gonna move on because this is this is kind of that same thing right like um, you make a statement and then there's a response and then that's it um, okay go ahead Linda it's not a statement it's a question then how is a policy or or a proposal that's coming before the board going to be discussed where the public can discuss it. Yep, so uh, any item, uh, people can make uh, comments or ask questions. Um, and I'm sorry that you didn't get a chance before the item was um, uh, voted on um, uh, about the uh, Public Art Commission recommendation. Um, yeah, I, I kind of wondered if you wanted to say something actually. Um, but anyway, so, but that would be the time, um, is when that item comes up. Um, if the item is not on the agenda, then the, you would make the comment at the beginning during general business and appearances. But if it is on the agenda, then you make that comment, um, when it's, when it comes up 
and if and anything on the consent agenda um, is sort of all sort of taken together. Um, so that's that's how that works. Um, Jody Peter, uh, Peterson, I see you've got your hand up. Hi. Yes. Thank you. I was just wondering, how do you? On the agenda, it says rules of procedure. Where do I find that before a meeting? Where do I find that to, to read about it, to understand it before we, you have a meeting? That's a great question. Uh, so the city council publishes uh, the, um, all of the attachments online. So did you, um, uh, my guess is that you joined by clicking on the uh, big green button on the home page, um, and then came up with the uh, agenda. There's a, a tab in that document. Um, it automatically comes uh, brings up the agenda. If you go to agenda items and files, then there are all the links to all of the um, attachments and um, uh, agenda items um, that uh, that the council is going to come uh, discuss. I hope that's helpful. I'll try, yeah. Okay, okay. if Thank it's you. not, let us know because they're there. <laughs> and we okay. wanna make sure that you, you have access to them. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Donna. Uh, I just wanted to sort of clarify for Linda and others. To me, there's a big difference between general appearances, which are about things not on the agenda. And hence to me, they should be more confined in time and if, they need more time, then we should put them on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, so I feel more comfortable because this number eight says, general appearances should be limited to no more than 10 minutes per subject, per topic. So that can make general appearances very long. If on each topic, each person spoke of in general appearances went 10 minutes or longer, I feel suddenly you have an agenda item sneaking in here. So I guess I feel more comfortable that if each topic could be more limited and then within that, the two minutes, and if things, if an item needs more discussion, then it should be pushed to an agenda item for the next meeting. Okay, thank you, that's, that's helpful, Jack. Thank you. I just wanted to point out in, in reference to the question that, uh, that Jody raised uh, on the city webpage, there's a page for city council and mayor. And at the bottom of that page, if you scroll down, the uh, items listed including include the city council manual, the goals and priorities established by the council, the rules of procedure, and the voting districts. So the proposed rules of procedure were in, in the packet for today's meeting, but also you can always find those uh, on the council page. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, and um, so Donna, did you wanna, um, I, there's been a motion and a second on the rules of procedure. Um, did you wanna make any additions or Changes well, I, to... I, I was offering a, an amendment of five minutes per subject matter to number eight, the one that okay. Peter had brought up for discussion. Five minutes per subject. Um, I support that as the is, nature of the motion. Okay. Um, any other thoughts on this, Council? Five minutes per subject. Yes, go ahead, Connor. I mean, I, I'm okay leaving it as it is. I think it's difficult to track a subject if we're not speaking consecutive order on a particular topic there. Mm -hmm. and, and then like, okay, so two minutes a speaker, if we do it five, right? Does somebody like get cut off after a minute then, like as opposed to two minutes? I, I think it's fine as it is. It's kind of discretionary, like with the mayor there. Two minutes a pop seems pretty good, you know, you would know if it goes longer to like maybe add it as an agenda item next next time but i don't know five minutes seems a bit short now i'm thinking for like a whole topic right it's, so i'm okay so with it what if what if um hmm, wondering if it would make any sense to limit you know 10 minutes per topic five minutes per person 
two minutes per person. Well, or two, or two, two. okay. It's the idea topic. is to bring up a topic that's not on the agenda. And yeah. If it needs more, then it should be on the agenda next time. And then we can okay. have all the exchange. So, so I'm here, <laughs> I'm hearing 10 minutes per topic, and two, two minutes per person. <laughs> Mayor, may that's, I make a comment? Um, uh, hold on there, Steve, I wanna just hear from council. Um, real quick about this um is uh, other folks on the council who haven't spoken yet other other thoughts um yeah lauren i'm more inclined to leave it as it is i was also confused thinking it was a per person thing um i i just think i agree with connor that like tracking topics and you know even if a bunch of people wanted to make clear that they were really concerned about something and took 30 seconds each. I don't want to just stifle the ability of the public to weigh in. Um, I think we should be erring towards hearing from people and giving that. And so I would just leave it as is. Okay, great. Uh, Jack. Um, I just want to recall that uh, a couple of years ago, there is a tremendous amount, a fair amount of public interest in uh, the operations of the police department. And we had uh, several meetings where there would be a dozen or 15 or more people uh, coming to speak on uh, general business and appearances. And that discussion would uh, sometimes go for half an hour or 45 minutes. And um, it, I, I wouldn't want to be in a position where we would say, well, we're never going to, we're going to limit an entire topic to 10 minutes because people were coming to us with, uh, with things that were uh, very important to them to say. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of wonder if that's the kind of occasion where we would agree to extend the amount of time. Um, well, we've just done it in the past. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, before I go to um, Steven, oh, uh, Carrie, go ahead. Yeah, um, I, you know, I'm not necessarily totally familiar with how these things go, but five minutes seems really short and 10 minutes seems like it's sort of possibly on the outside so that when, if it looks like it were heading to 10 minutes, then we can, we can extend or not but five minutes could be just a couple of people. And so cutting it off after five minutes or we're forcing ourselves into a position where now we have to vote to extend for, you know, one more person needs to talk and we need two more minutes. So I feel like 10 minutes probably gives us a little bit more flex time. And although I do agree with Donna that if it's taking a while, then it needs to be an agenda item. And then, you know, that's our signal to make it an agenda item, but I'm, I'm leaning towards let's leave it the way it is. Okay. Um, uh, Donna. Well, but then this could be interpreted. One person could talk 10 minutes on one topic and then talk another 10 minutes on another topic in general appearances versus something on the agenda, which we don't limit the time on. Yeah, thoughts on, uh, so, so team, I, I have been uh, like treating the two minutes per person as sort of guidelines um and and whatnot are are you how, how are you feeling about um keeping the per person at, at least guidelines at two minutes i'm seeing a nod from carrie thumbs up from jennifer nods from donna thumbs up from lauren okay do do we need to have it written in in this section I, I mean i think of it as like guidelines so that we're not um there's like flexibility um okay all right i just wanted to make sure that we were clear on that before um you know if, yeah if we needed to write it in or if, if we could just uh you know leave it as a, a common understanding um uh steve go ahead uh i'm encouraged to hear that you're actually considering uh allowing up to five minutes, but uh, this folds into what I said at the beginning of my public comments is that you don't have a system to uh, recognize that issues are big and need agenda items. And so what, what you've done is you've turned the uh, general businesses and appearances as a way to just as a, you know, alert or a 
a minimalizing, a, a trivializing. So I've been bringing real substantive issues uh, of lack of oversight or violations, and y'all, you know, say, "Oh, your two minutes is up, and we won't talk about it again until you get fit it into another two minutes." So I think if you're going to formalize transferring uh, issues to the uh, agenda of the following meeting, that's that's a big step forward. And if you're allowing the latitude to up to five minutes. Uh, during general business, I think that if somebody has multiple comments to make on different topics, which in a good democracy, more people would do, uh, speak up about multiple issues that are troubling their community, uh, that's going to take more than two minutes. And, and to arbitrarily cut it off is not, I don't even believe it's consistent with open meeting law. So you, this is a variable section of the uh, meeting, and you might say, at 20 minutes, we're going to carry public comments over to the following meeting. Um, but you, you, you need to have a, a process to uh, revisit issues that are uh, more complicated than just a two minute nod and it's swept off the rug again. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Jack. Um, I will, will point out that uh, our rules of procedure as they're written now, rule 12 does provide uh, a mechanism for residents to request an item to be placed on the agenda. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay, um, any other comments about the rules of procedure? Um, just so I know where we landed, um, Jack, were we at five minutes per topic or 10? The I think we landed, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. The original motion was 10. Uh, Donna suggested we do move it to five. There is never a vote on that suggestion. So I think that we're at 10 unless something happens to change that. Okay, um, uh, Carrie, go ahead. So Jack, you accepted that amendment. Yeah, you so did. I think that it, it, we so didn't have to vote on it because you, as the maker of the original motion, you accepted it. That's that's true. Already the parliamentarian. <laughs> yeah. So we have five on the table. We so can change it again. Five, we could we could change it again. Um, Donna, you could withdraw your um, amendment, I believe, or Jack could decide to reject it, <laughs> or we could just vote. What do you think? Um, what do you think, Donna? Do you want to, or or Jack? Go go ahead, Donna. If you have a, a thought. Under Robert's rules, there's really no such thing as a friendly amendment anyway, but- uh, I know, we, we were being very, very sloppy. Right, but uh, I, I think it's fine to just go with five and see how things go. We don't have to okay. be stuck with the rules forever. If, if, if we find that it's, uh, it's become unwieldy or if we find that it has, uh, it's not giving adequate time, we can amend. Other thoughts? Okay. <laughs> All right, so it's so the, the motion on the table is to change it to five instead of 10, if I'm correct. Um, so I think that's what we're voting on here, team. You ready? Uh, okay, any further discussion? Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Ooh, we got three. <laughs> and I thought it was much. Uh, all, all opposed. Hey. No. Okay. <laughs> now I got to do a roll and call. So I get to vote. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's three to three. I'm going to vote no. Uh, and so um, we have that to do a roll call. It. Oh, we do have to do a roll call. Uh, okay, you're going to go in the order that I see you on my screen. Yes, Jennifer. Wait, I think I didn't vote correctly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I am so it's sorry. Okay. It's and okay. You chance now. I was agreeing. That's why we do the roll call. Exactly. Okay, well, I, I, I was in line with Connor, and then all of a sudden I realized Connor and me didn't vote the same way. So now I'm like, wait, what did I just vote on? Okay. All right. Fair enough. We'll, we'll, we'll do a roll call. Um, Jack. And maybe, and maybe state the motion again just so everyone. Thank clear. you. Thank you. Okay. So the motion is to approve the uh, rules of. I just want to make sure I'm saying it 
correctly here, um, the rules of procedure, uh, changing uh, item eight to say five minutes per subject instead of 10. Um, and so I'm gonna go in order, uh, well, actually in the order that you appear on my screen, Jack. Aye. Connor. Nay. Jennifer. Nay. N nay. Nay. <laughs> Donna. Yes. Lauren. Nay. Carrie. Nay. Okay, so uh, the motion does not pass. Uh, is there a different motion? To accept the rules and procedures as presented. That's your motion? That's a motion? Yep, second. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, there, Lauren's, Lauren's got a second. Okay, um, further discussion, as is. Okay, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, so that was unanimous. So that motion passes and we have accepted the rules of procedure as, um, as presented. All right, so we are on to our ethics policy. Um, and this is something that we, saw, we have to approve every year. Any, um, uh, actually it, let's, let's start with, is there a motion to approve the ethics policy? I'll move to approve it. Is, and Lauren's a second. <clears throat> okay, um, discussion about the ethics policy. I'm not seeing any. Okay, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, so our ethics policy passes. Um, all right, on to approving uh, standards and group norms. So um, I think this is, this is again, something that we have approved in the past. Um, so I just want to uh, check in. Bill, is there anything you wanna say about this? Well, um, a few years ago, uh, the council did a workshop with a, a facilitator and came up with these uh, sort of rules and standards and group norms of sort of how to work with one another. And the council at that time adopted them. And we've continued to put this on during this meeting every year. Uh, if, if people feel they're no longer necessary, that's fine. If they, you know, uh, again, it's your chance to make these your own. Um, but we've, they have been in the, you know, the council has been adopting them annually. Great. Um, I am fine with these, um, but I do want to note, uh, I did not see one thing that uh, a, a group norm that um, we have adhered to in the past, um, which I, I don't think is shown up here. Uh, but is about uh, council making posts on social media um, just so that everybody is aware uh, the general practice has been that, um, you know, we'll, we'll certainly like try to get people involved and get out information. Um, but when it comes to um, opining about things, uh, it's, uh, social media has the risk of uh, becoming a uh, like a, a discussion and it's not a, a source or it's not it's not like uh, gosh my words are not right there today um, we want to avoid violating open meeting law basically and so we don't want to have an online uh, discussion about uh, topics so I just wanted to remind folks about that um, I guess that's you know, it's maybe not so much subjective as that it's just not violating open meeting law. <laughs> um, so, but I wanna make sure that, that we're all clear about that. Um, yeah, okay, any other thoughts on the group norms? Yes, Jack. I think um, I, I would encourage anyone to read the group norms. The purpose of these norms is, is really to, uh, to ensure that uh, the uh, process at the council is 
open and respectful and productive. And uh, I think we all work hard to hold ourselves to, uh, to that standard. And I think that when we do, it, uh, it serves the interests of the public and it uh, makes, the, uh, makes the process work better. And to the extent that we don't, there's, um, I think we would all be falling short of what our constituents have, uh, have a right to expect of us. And so I fully support this. Thank you. Uh, Cameron. Yes, Mayor, I am doing the thing I did last time where when Stephen unmutes, I'm going to mute him because he has a lot of background noise, but I want him to be recognized. So I'm going to raise my hand for him. Okay. Uh, Steve, I'm going to keep muting you. Um, so they're not disrupting other people's Zoom experiences, but I will raise my hand for you. Great. Okay. Uh, Steve, go ahead. Uh yeah, briefly, I just wanted to raise a flag about the policy that you just discussed, Mayor. The uh, the public records retention uh, necessitates that if counselors are posting on public business in public social media forums, uh, my recommendation is that they send a copy of both the post they're responding to and their own posting uh, to uh, the City Hall public records for, for filing. Um, because I just did a request of Bill's request, uh, posts on so Front Porch Forum related to the Elks Club property, and I was told that the, the posts that he was responding to are not available to him, and therefore you're lacking the necessary context of, of the answers that he's giving. So that's my recommendation, is that you uh, be very explicit about uh, posting rules for city councilors in social media environments. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, any other thoughts on the uh, group norms? Okay, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, um, so that passes. And I think we are ready to move on to committee assignments. So for, um, for this, I'm sure probably a lot of folks maybe want to stay on committees that they are already serving on, but there's also definitely some, um, some gaps. Uh, so we're just going to take this one at a time, uh, and then we'll look to approve the whole thing at the very end. Um, does that sound all right, team? Okay, all right, so um, we're gonna start at the top and we'll work our way down this list. Um, uh, yes, Jack, go ahead. Just a quick observation. It, this might be a good thing to uh, have uh, Cameron or someone share the screen so that the members of the public who are in attendance can see what the, what the committee assignments are. Thank you. Great call. Okay. And Cameron, do you have the capacity to edit this as we go? Didn't. Uh, Cameron, are you there? I'm gonna yes, I'm sorry. I couldn't figure out how to unmute myself um, when I was sharing my screen. Yes, oh. I can. Yes, I can live edit. Fabulous. Okay. Um, uh, the Americans with Disabilities uh, Act Committee. Uh, Councillor McCullough, you were on this before. Do you want to uh, continue or is there anyone else who is interested? I'm very happy to continue. I think the work of the committee is very important, but I don't want to foreclose anyone else who wants to get on. Anyone else interested? Okay. Um, here, uh, I can't. I can't see everyone, so I'm just gonna. Um, oh, sorry, uh, Jennifer, go ahead. Sorry, I'm using an iPad right now, and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I apologize for my clunkiness <laughs> tonight. Um, at, so how often good. do they? Does that committee meet? It's uh, roughly 
we, we were just talking about that the other day because we had a meeting uh, on Tuesday. It's either every two months or every three months. And I think we already have the date for our next meeting three months out. It's, uh, it's one of the few committees that meets during the work day. It has been at uh, 10 o'clock on Tuesdays. Okay. I would be your backup if you weren't able to, you know, oh, cool. for that. Absolutely. Or would you, I mean, Jennifer, do you, would, would you want to be the representative? I mean, kind of, I did do the lend program with UVM and this would be really awesome. Oh, do it. Take it. <laughs> yeah. But if you're really passionate okay. about it, I don't want to take it away. No, I, I think it's totally fine. Okay. Oh, great. Super. Thank you. And thank you for speaking up. And because I can't see everybody, um, counselors, if you will just um, unmute yourself uh, to jump in the conversation here. All right, uh, Building Code Appeals Committee. Um, it was Councillor Hurl and Morton. I'm happy to continue. Okay. okay. It's, it's for Carrie and... I know uh, Jennifer's on it, but it meets sporadically. Probably last year it met like three times or something kind of clumped together. So it's just when uh, like an appeal comes up and they're usually like 15 minute meetings. So it's a pretty low, <laughs> low maintenance, but important committee. Jennifer, what do you think? If you don't want to continue, sure. that's okay. I can stay, I can stay on it. That's fine. Okay. Um, anyone else interested? Okay. Uh, it sounds like that one is good to go then. Uh, okay. The Capital Improvement Committee. Uh, that was and? myself. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say I'm very interested. I'm, I'm very interested too. Oh, Donna is interested as well. Um, we usually have three. And you do, does anybody else want, or is, is anyone else interested? We, we often have um, uh, the new folks on this committee to get a sense of, I mean, it's, it's a lot of what the, the city does has to do with capital improvements. Um, so it's kind of a nice way to um, be involved in that. Um, but of course, if it's, if it's, Lauren and Donna and I, then, then Carrie and Jennifer, it, you know, if, we can't have everybody there. Well, it's I, actually, to be fair, I, mean, good. I, I would certainly get off if uh, Jennifer and uh, Carrie are interested. I if you're, if you're not, that's, there's no pressure, but if you would yeah. like, I want to make sure that you have the opportunity. Yeah, Carrie, go ahead. I, so I, I'm just kind of interested in all of it. It all looks interesting, and I don't really know much about any of it. So I'm ha uh, anything that I were any committee I'm part of, I'll, I'll learn a lot and I'll find it really interesting. So I'm happy to to slot in where maybe if there was a spot that Jay Erickson had that somebody else hasn't wanted to take, I'm happy to do that. If you have recommendations and you want to encourage me as a new person to be on a certain committee, I'm happy to do that, but I, I don't have strong, strong preferences. It all looks fascinating. Okay. That's good to know. Um, yeah, she can have my slot. <laughs> it, it might, it might be good. Um, are you okay with that, Donna? Yeah, that's what I said. She can have my okay. slot. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it is good to uh, learn about all the, the, the capital things that the city is involved in. Um, so, and Jennifer, are you, uh, how are you feeling? If you, if, how are you feeling about this committee particularly? If not, you know, that's fine, but yeah. Okay. The, the capital right. improvement doesn't meet often. I mean, the, the first couple meetings are longer because they're educating you so much on the terms and yeah. approach. Yeah. Well, it, I also longer. don't, I also, I feel like if, one of you who have been on the council longer really want to do it. I don't want to stand in your way. You've been waiting for a while. So, well, you know, what we can do is um, we could also, um, we could just warn it as a, as a meeting. That's, that's sort of the, the way around it. If there's four of us. Um, 
it does meet just the one time uh, or a couple of times, I suppose. Um, can we actually just like flag that one and come back to it? Um, if that's okay. All right, thank you. All right, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, this is not necessarily a council person. Um, and I feel like we, well, no, I guess we, I was gonna say, did we appoint Marcella recently? But I guess it wasn't that recently. Um, perhaps this is one that we can, unless somebody would like to. Uh, oh, hi, Mike, yes, go ahead. <laughs> hi, um, good evening, councilors and mayor. This is Mike Miller. I'm the uh, planning director for the city. And I'm also staff for the Planning Commission. And this has historically been a position or uh, a representative from the Planning Commission that sits on this. And so they actually had a meeting last, at their last meeting two weeks ago, they started to have a discussion about who might want to fill the, the seat. And they're gonna be, uh, they were planning on voting on it next Monday. Um, I know Marcella is interested in staying on it. Um, and rather than having me be the alternate, I believe, um, it may end up being Gabe Lajeunesse, but they were going to vote on it next week. If you're willing to kind of put it in as um, planning commission appointed, then they can take care of that and we can send you a memo notifying you as to who, who got appointed. Great. That's very helpful. Thank you. Uh, all right. Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission Transportation Committee, or the TAC, uh, Donna, this has been you. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it, but if someone's interested, I can certainly yield. Anybody else interested in that one? It's a monthly meeting on Tuesday, the fourth Tuesday of the month. I'm not hearing any takers. Um, so Donna, if you're willing to continue, that is great. No, I really enjoy it. That's great, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Central Vermont Public Safety Authority. Now, Donna, you are already. No, I'm uh, an elected. Uh, Doug Hoyt and Justin are currently your two appointed. Yeah, and we just appointed uh, Justin recently, right? Right. I feel like we, we did that. So I feel like we should assume that Justin is still willing to he, serve, but we should check. He, he's been very involved, but who, who would be up? I mean, their terms are actually for two years. Okay. Even though as a city council, you go through it every year. So it's really Doug's term who would be up for reappointment for another two years if no council member okay. wants it. And is, I, think, it, I believe Doug is open to be reappointed. And uh, any other counselors interested? Okay. All right. Um, Central Mont Solid Waste Management. Um, I, I suppose it probably could be a counselor, but it has been Donna Barlu Casey. Any, any counselor interested in that one? Okay, and I um, assume that we'll, we'll leave Donna's name there. And if she does not want it, then she'll get back in touch with us. I think she's pretty engaged with it actually. Okay, but. great. All right, the Community Justice Center Citizen Advisory Board. We pointed uh, Donna Bates, yes. Actually, for some reason, I thought when Dan left, there were several changes on this committee and I got appointed at the last one because the, Dan left. I think yeah. it was Jennifer and then I was Dan and- It was me and then I got a job at the Barry CJC so I couldn't right. be on the- Right, it was Dan, Jennifer, then me, there you go. And I'm willing okay. to stay on, it's, it's definitely educational. It's, okay. It's once a month. Fair enough. And they would like some stability. So I feel I owe them at least a year if you would allow <laughs> me to serve another a year. I've only been on in a couple of months. Yep. Um, the City Hall Art Committee, I feel like we should maybe take off the list. <laughs> um, uh, do you, uh, does anyone feel differently about that? 
you know, some, some of the things we wanted done got done with and without us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> The yeah. pictures got moved and the art came in. And yeah. Well, and we should let the T.W. Wood Gallery know that it's a new year and we'd love some new art. Um, uh, <laughs> Bill, is it okay if we put that on your radar? Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, especially, well, we don't know if we're going to be in person here soon, but we'll have that discussion, I suppose, at some point. All right. The Energy Advisory Committee, I would like to stay on. <laughs> Lauren would like to stay on. There's no, uh, there is space for a third if, an, if anyone else would like to join. Okay, not hearing anyone, we'll move on. Um, the Harry Sheridan Scholarship, I'm, I think it probably makes sense for me to continue as I am also at the school. Um, so I, unless anyone else um, would like that, I would like to Stay on that. Not hearing anyone. Okay. Uh, all right. Homelessness Task Force. Um, do we have a representative on that currently? Oh, we appointed um, Jennifer. Yes, Jennifer. Um, thoughts on staying on? And that's a yes. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I, I've been on that as well for the past year or so. Oh, okay. I'm Great. Happy to continue, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, excellent. Excellent. And you're you're happy to stay on? Yep. Okay, great. Super. Uh, housing Task Force. That's me. Okay. And other people could join as well, I assume, yes? Oh, yeah. All right. So anyone else want to jump in on that one? Um, I would be interested in that one. Okay, great. I, I can say that there's been some discussion in the at the task force lately about changing the nature and status of the task force and so that may be coming to the council at some in the near future. Okay. Um, and the housing trust fund. Again, I'm willing to keep doing it. Okay. Um, and this is um, not something that can have more than one right. person There's on it. Designated there's a designated number of uh, appointees, one of yeah. whom is okay. a council member. But anybody else like to do that? It, the, the board, uh, it's, a, it's the Housing Trust Fund Advisory Board. It meets, tends to meet once or twice a year to review what uh, standards will be applied to uh, applications for, uh, for grants. From the uh, from the housing trust fund, and it's advisory in nature. So whatever is is decided at the trust fund advisory board then comes to the council for decision. Okay. All right. Unless anyone else wants that one, we're going to move on. Okay. The investment committee. Uh, Connor, you were on that. Do you want to stay on that? Yeah, no, I like it well enough. I have my thumb on the pulse of Wall Street. So it's a, awesome. It's okay, great. Okay, Montpelier Live Board. Now we um, no longer have Councillor Erickson. So um, this is this person is like a liaison basically between the council and uh, Montpelier Live. Um, I don't know how often they meet. Other, th other thoughts, anyone up for that? I think it's monthly, Mayor. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to do it. It's not a super area of expertise of mine, but I'm definitely willing to do it. Awesome. Uh, anyone else lot. up for it? Okay, great. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, all right, the Mount Pelier Foundation uh, was vacant. Um, I have a sense that we have an appointment to, that we, we get to make an appointment to their board. And I think the last time I checked, we appointed, um, uh, I am forgetting her name, Koya Mo Mosier Brown, maybe. Um, and so we should probably check in um, with her to see if she is yeah, I'll yeah, I'll I'll 
send you the, <laughs> I'll send you the, the, her name soon there, Cameron. Um, should see if, if she's still willing to stay on. Um, unless someone else would like to be that person, what would like to represent this city? I don't think I don't want to cut, kick someone off. We just uh, just appointed, so yeah, no fair. Um, okay, great. All right, uh, the Parks Commission. Um, I'm interested. Okay, others and, maybe also. Any anyone else interested? I and to be fair, we could have I think more than one. Um, but uh, anyone else interested? Okay, well, thank you, Donna. Um, all right, so Social and Economic Justice Advisory Committee. Uh, Lauren, you were on that, any interest in staying? I, yeah, I'm interested in staying. Um, I think we could definitely have more people if others are interested, the more the merrier. Yeah, this is an open kind of group, so, um, Yes, Jennifer, are you, you're, we should put your name in. Okay, great. So we'll put you both in there. Oh, no, wait, so um, uh, yeah, Cameron, Jennifer is in for the Social and Economic Justice Committee, which is the next one, along with um, Lauren. Perfect, okay, super. Okay, um, anyone else? Okay, uh, transportation infrastructure. Donna, it had been you interested in staying. Yeah. Uh, I am, but okay. others can join me if they like. Yep, this is uh, another open group. Any other, anyone else interested? Okay, all right, moving on then. Um, oh yeah, TW Wood Board. Uh, all right, so we, don't have anyone presently there. Uh, this is actually one that I used to serve on and it's a great group and um, highly recommend them uh, if anyone wants to, to jump in from them, but I uh, or jump in to, to serve uh, with them. Uh, the, I guess we were looking for someone from the Public Arts Commission to be that person. So um, maybe, um, Bill, this is something you could potentially follow up on, see if someone from the Public Arts Commission would be up for that. And unless, <clears throat> excuse me, unless there's a counselor who would like to do it. Okay. <clears throat> excuse me, all right, so to be continued there. Um, the Police Review Committee, it was uh, Lauren and Jack. Do you wanna continue? Sure. Yes, Lauren. Well, just so I believe that one has like disbanded and okay. one of our recommendations it was to look at reformulating something. So I don't think there is one right now, but we might okay. reconstitute it and could do it at that point. <clears throat> um, although if we just want to keep it as a placeholder, like I'm happy to do it again or <laughs> we could get okay. that information now if we want, but just to flat. Okay. That. Seems Agreed. like, a, yeah. Thank you, Cameron, for, for making that note and it's, you know, the, the row is not going away. So if we need to fill it back in, we, we can. Um, all right, the My Ride Committee it had been Donna and Connor. Is that group still meeting? Yeah, I missed the last one or two, but I, I'd like to continue serving if I could. Yeah, okay. it means this Friday. Okay. And I assume we could have a third if we wanted to. Anyone else oh, interested? Yeah. And, and remind everybody, you can always attend and listen to a meeting without being the appointed person, just to learn about the committee. Okay, um, great. Uh, the public restroom committee, Connor and Lauren. I wonder if that like warrants a bit of council discussion in the future. It's um, something that Dan Richardson suggested, which I, I thought was a good idea. There's so much overlap with the homelessness task force, you know, mm. it feels, um, you know, I, I wonder if having parallel discussions make sense on that or if there's another mechanism. Um, obviously, there's other populations that would serve. Yeah. 
but we, we haven't gotten it off the ground. We've got some criticism for that, which, which I think is warranted, but um, I, I just wonder if it makes sense. Uh, Jack, go ahead. How about putting it on our agenda for our next meeting to make a decision on that? Sure. Um, Bill, I don't have in my head what is on the next agenda. I think it's probably there's zoning on the next agenda, actually, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next, first public hearing on zoning, um, presumably the second reading on the park temporary ordinance if you pass the first tonight. Uh, uh, the River Conservancy is going to provide an update on Confluence Park, uh, reaffirming the strap plan and a couple other uh, smaller items, maybe even consent items. So. Okay. Um, well, so having a discussion on it doesn't also preclude the Homelessness Task Force from discussing it. Um, one possibility is that we could put it on next uh, agendas next meeting's uh, agenda. And then um, if we run out of time, then you know we can see what deserves priority um, at that point. But I would also be interested in hearing about the Homelessness Task Force opinion on um, just, you know, what, what their thought is on being the only group discussing it. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, I, and I think there's a lot of moving pieces. We have a lobbyist now who's like looking at the House Institutions Committee for a mechanism to get like some more money. We've also got like the 425K built into the budget for like ARPA funds for next year. Yeah. So yeah, like I, I could go either way on it, but I, I think it warrants a bigger discussion than just tonight. It's okay. Um, I have some thoughts on how to proceed with that potentially. So maybe you and I can um, be in touch about that. Um, so, okay, great. And I think that is the end. Phew, we made it. Um, all right, did everybody get on uh, enough committees? <laughs> all right, okay. So is there a um, motion regarding uh, appointing the uh, folks as discussed to these committees? Jack. I move that we appoint the slate that we just filled in. Okay. Is there a second? I'll pick in. I'll sec. Okay. okay, there's a second. A question. Okay. Oh, yes, Donna, go ahead. Did I miss it? Did you do stormwater? You know, it's not on here, actually. And, um, I mean, but we, we had a meeting. Uh, we had a meeting last Friday, and Jay attended, and he's expressed an interest, even though he's you know, not on the council anymore, he still would like to serve if no other council member wants to. Okay, and uh, but you were there. Um, well, and... but I wasn't there for the council. I was there from MTIC. Oh, okay. Uh... And at one point, I thought Lauren expressed an interest. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm on the email list. I had a, a work conflict, so I couldn't go, but I'm planning to participate. Okay. Although if someone else is, is eager to, um, but I'm happy to do it if helpful. Okay. Um, great. Well, I'll be uh, eager to hear about how it goes. Anyone else uh, interested in serving on that committee? Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Donna, for um, bringing that up. That's great. So within yes. the motion, are we adding Lauren and Jay to the um, stormwater, the SRO committee? Um, so, sorry, the SRO committee uh, is no longer, that, that's something else. That's school resource officer. Oh. Or no, okay. is that not school oh, resource officer? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So. I was, um, may okay. I jump back on off mute to remind y'all that you wanted to circle back to the capital improvement plan? Oh, committee? yes. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Uh, I. I uh, I guess it comes down to, to Jennifer, do you want to be on, would you like to be on this committee? <laughs> I mean, sure, it feels like it would be very important. Okay, so I, I will um, take myself off of that list. Um, though I will just give you a heads up now that um, I, I'm still interested in attending. And so I may, um, 
cause there to be the need for a, a warrant uh, meeting for that. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, but for now, I think that's, that's great. Okay, Donna, did you have a thought? Oh. I'll likewise attend the capital improvement. And I, I don't know, I really think it should be the whole council because we end up, they're going to be bringing all of it back to the whole council and going through the same steps of explaining. Um, yeah. It's, it's a really essential discussion. You know, I, I think, especially Donna, if you and I both also want to be there, we'll, you know, we, we can just warn it and see who, 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 who can, who can make it. Um, so for now, <laughs> uh, Bill, I realize that that's probably inconvenient <laughs> for you all, but just, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that when we get there. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, Jack, you had a, a motion uh, prior so, to these clarifications. Yes, go ahead, Jack. So I, I would just move to amend my motion to include the changes we just made. All right. Is there a second? This is the amendment to include this stuff, um, to include the ones that we just, just discussed. Is there a second? Second. Okay. This is the amendment, including the, the new things. Um, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and opposed. All right, so now we are voting on the whole thing, right? And so um, I, I, there was a motion and a second for this as well, right? Yes. Okay, so um, voting on everybody now. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and opposed. Okay, great. Uh, so thank you, everybody, um, for stepping up to these positions. This is great. Uh, all right, so, uh, all right, and I see Kate Stevenson has already turned her camera on. Super, thank you. Uh, we are um, moving on to our next agenda item, which is uh, the uh, metrics uh, summary report from the Energy Advisory Committee. Uh, Kate, go ahead. Thanks, Mayor Watson. Um, so I'm here as a member of the Montpelier Energy Advisory Committee. Um, on, an, on my annual visit to tell you about the, the energy use for the city of Montpelier's municipal buildings and operations. So um, before I launch into the slides, just to give a little context for those of you who are new to the council, um, MIAC is a group of volunteers um, that, that is here. No, our mission is to support the council in um, and advise you on energy related issues for the city. And what we have been doing for now 10 years, so since um, fiscal year 2011, we have been tracking the city's um, annual energy use, which includes electricity use, thermal heating, and, um, and vehicle um, emissions, or yeah, energy and emissions. And um, so, it's really exciting in a lot of ways to, to know that we now have 10 years worth of data. And, you know, every year when I add more to the graphs and the charts, you know, we start to see some interesting trends. Um, and of course, you know, last year's data was kind of wonky because we basically had a quarter of like all the buildings being closed and people not going into work and <laughs> in some departments and then other departments were just kind of doing business as usual in some ways. Um, and I think I can say overall, FY21 also had some unusual trends, you know, that may not really reflect um, changes that we expect in a, on an ongoing basis. So just say that to, to dive in. And I also mentioned that in back in April, in August, we completed the 2030 net zero action plan. Uh, where we had hired some support from the Vermont Energy Investment Corporation. And that plan is really designed to both create kind of our base, to reinforce our baseline calculations and then look at what are the steps that the city would need to take between now and 2030 to meet our goal for municipal operations to be net zero. Um, so we'll kind of look at where we are as of this past fiscal year and then um, kind of revisit that just to look at kind of where we're headed on that trajectory. Um, so let me, Cameron, can you let me share my screen, please? There you go. Okay. 
So one of the sort of big picture first things that we always are trying to track because this relates directly to our net zero goal is what's the percentage of renewable energy versus fossil fuel energy. Um, so this year we came in at 43% renewable energy, um, which is an increase over previous years. So the trend is going in the right direction. Um, and I will say one of the things that came out of the VEIC report and the action plan is we did broaden our circle a little bit in terms of what we're counting. Um, we dug a little deeper into the schools and we are now including uh, the school buses, even though they are leased by the city, we're including um, the, the school buses in kind of our overall calculations. So, you know, there, and also just the way that we're grouping some of these things changed a little bit as we, as we went through and dug into all of that. Um, okay. So this gives you the 10 year picture, just looking at where are we going? The green bar on the bottom is total renewal, renewable energy and the blue section on top is fossil fuels. So you can see um, you know, the trend line increasing. You also look at the last two years, you'll see the overall energy use has gone down um, pretty significantly over the last two years and uh, renewable energy is up. And so therefore, you know, the percentage renewable is increasing. Um, and then when you, you also kind of look at it, like not just renewable fossil fuel, but we break it down by type just to kind of understand what the chunks are. Um, so here we've got on the, the top layer, that kind of dark brown section is all electricity. Um, the big blue layer on the bottom, the other biggest chunk is fuel oil. And then in between, we've got a mix of um, propane, diesel, very small. <laughs> I don't think you can see the pellets line because it's so small compared to everything else. But we have a very small amount of pellets. We have gasoline, biogas, that's from the uh, water resource recovery facility. Um, so those are kind of all the different fuels that add up into this. And then we also kind of look at it by department. And um, so probably should have kept the colors the same and used my blue and green. But in this, in this graph, we're just kind of showing by department, um, the orange is fossil fuel use, the blue is um, renewable energy. So generally you can, see, you can see here, you know, city hall, it's on district heat so that it's primarily all renewable. Um, and also I'll say our, our, our electricity mix is mostly renewable. So, um, so you'll see that in these as well. The elementary school also on district heat. Um, police station is on district heat but they do have quite a um, higher amount of vehicle um, fuels. So you'll see they have more orange, um, but the bigger the biggest users you can say and the biggest opportunities in terms of fossil fuel reduction are the high school, the middle school, um, public works and the water resource recovery facility. So again, I don't think this is probably a huge surprise to any of you, but it's interesting to just kind of look at the variation between departments and, and it helps us understand kind of where to put our energy, put our put our personal energy as we go forward. Um, the other thing I will say just on this is one of the tweaks that we made before we kind of held the district heat utility as a separate department. And now we've folded that into public works. So the um, energy required to run the district heat loop is, is under that public works bar in the graph and it will be going forward. This is just a, you know, different way of looking at it. But again, like looking at our total energy use, where are the big chunks? The, the fuel oil is really the place that um, we, we wanna focus a lot of our attention um, going forward. There will also be, you know, work to do on diesel and gasoline. But for now, I would say, you know, our, our focus is, is really narrowing in on fuel switching on some of those buildings that are still running on fuel oil. And this is just looking at it in a different way, again, by department as a piece of the pie. Um, 
So these probably won't change significantly. It'll, it's ideally just the type of fuel within each of these sectors that will change over time. And you'll see, yeah, the school bus contractor we got added in here. So overall trends, um, we actually had a 3.5% reduction from the previous fiscal year. Um, but again, last year was really low, partly because of COVID. It's, but it's interesting to look like compared to fiscal year 19, we were down 16%, um, which, is, which is a lot for a two year reduction. Um, and our renewable energy percentage went up from 39% to 43% in the last year. And the biggest change um, that happened was the reduction in heating fuel use to run the district heat utility in the summer. Um, so that went down from, I think, around 10,000 gallons to less than around 1,000 gallons. So that was a huge win, something we've been looking forward to for a long time. And so that, that is reflected in here. Um, and I just want to give us like the quick snapshot of the 2030 Net Zero Action Plan. Again, we worked with VEIC. It lays out a path to zero over the next eight years um, to eliminate or offset all fossil fuel use by 2030. Um, in the plan, we're projecting that we can get to 88% renewable fuel use if we take all the actions that they lay out and that the and basically the, the remaining 12% would need to be covered with offsets. And that's primarily for vehicles, mostly DPW vehicles that we don't anticipate can be electric in the next eight years. The things like the snow plows and excavators and some of the heavy equipment, um, just not projecting that we're gonna be able to get those completely off of gasoline and diesel. So our priorities in terms of just bringing us back to the plan are looking at fuel switching for heating at the high school, the middle school, the water plant, and the DPW garage and office. So those are kind of the four focus areas. And this is just a graph from that plan that shows you know, how we can get there over the next eight years. Um, and you'll see, yeah, kind of a, a big jump in 2021. And so that is the district heat com combined with um, the upgrades to the wastewater recovery facility. Um, what we didn't quite see in FY21 was that much change at the, I call it the wharf, but <laughs> the wastewater plant. Um, because if you might remember, they, are in the, they were in the process of finishing phase one of the improvements. And those didn't really come into effect until like January. So they still had half of a heating season when they were using oil this past fiscal year. Um, and then they switched to basically running on 100% biogas for heating. So I think that's like looking forward, that's where we're gonna see the next big chunk is um, in FY22, we should see the fuel oil at the wastewater recovery facility drop pretty close to zero. So just a few footnotes, I guess. Um, we did, we do have an issue with the solar production at the wastewater recovery facility. It's a pretty small array, but it dropped by 90%. Um, it sounds, sounds like there's a repair that's needed and they have someone lined up to do those repairs, but I don't know if that's been completed at this point. Um, solar production from all of our arrays. So we have a one megawatt array um, that we lease through a power purchase agreement. And that is half of it's in Montpelier and half of it's in Sharon. But um, the production of our, from our big solar array uh, was down 12% overall. And that literally is because it was like not as sunny <laughs> as the previous year. Um, it was still good and it was like, actually, I think 2020 was just an extremely sunny year. <laughs> um, so it looks like a reduction, but it's actually kind of pretty much on par for what we expected. Um, again, the district heat oil use went down from averaging around 15,000 gallons a year to under a thousand gallons. So that was huge win. Um, we already talked about phase one improvements and we talked about adding the school bus contractor. Um, 
And I think that's all I got. So I'd be happy to take questions from the council or the public. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Jack, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Kate. Uh, as always, great presentation and the information is really great to have. Um, I have two, uh, I guess, yes, a question and an observation. And, and the observation is that since we've added the uh, school bus contract into the picture, what that means is that 43% is not only a bigger percentage of our total use, but it's a bigger percentage of a bigger number. So it's a bigger advance than that uh, percentage increase would, uh, would suggest. And so, yay us. Um, <clears throat> a small question about the, the vehicles. I assume that if the difference between, there's no difference in greenhouse gas and climate in, impact between uh, diesel and gasoline. There is a slight difference in the emissions profile. I'd have to pull up all my conversion tables, but yeah. So does that suggest that we should, to the extent that we could, we could, should be looking to move to, from gas to diesel or is it the other way? Oh, I don't think you should think about either of those. Okay. I think you should think about how to get off both. Yep. And that, yeah, the, the incremental difference is not significant. Okay. So I don't think it would be worth saying, okay, we, you know, go through the process of switching from a diesel snowplow to a gas snowplow. It, um, yeah, let's, yep. let's focus on other things. Yeah, yeah, people, whenever we're buying vehicles, people are used to hearing me say, would that have been available in an electric version? <laughs> Thanks. Other questions or comments? Yeah, Lauren, go ahead. Um, no questions, because as always, Kate did such a great job explaining everything, um, but just wanted to, first of all, thank you. I know it's such a huge amount of work to actually gather and collate all of that data and appreciate how you put it in such, um, compelling and easy to understand <laughs> format for all of us and all the different breakdowns are really helpful to see. Um, and I think it's just really exciting to see the steady progress that we now have the 2030 action plan um, that we funded last year and that the community just voted in the budget to invest in um, energy coordinator position as well as some, some of these upgrades um, and fuel switching investments and things. So keeping moving on it, so just love keeping an eye on it and keeping on track to make those. Um, and I think it's just worth noting, I know like the schools came up a lot and there are conversations between um, MEAC and a school facilities committee. Um, so just noting that for folks that, that um, there's obviously that needs to be a big part of the attention over the next couple of years and conversations are at least um, happening and hopefully. We'll yes, I guess they're meeting tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to be there, but. Um... Yes, the, the school district facilities committee has been, I guess, talking about restarting. So um, so that's a good sign. And, and we're going to try to have MIAC representation or at least like try to have someone come and attend those meetings going forward. And I will say, Lauren, I, I look forward to handing off my spreadsheet to the new energy coordinator or whoever is hired because I don't need to do it anymore. And, um, and also a shout out to Todd Preventure, who was um, back in City Hall temporarily and help, was the one that chased down all the data for us. So um, couldn't have done it without him. Thank you. Yeah, Jennifer. Hi, yeah, I just wanted to also kind of piggyback on what Lauren said about the presentation and I, really truly appreciate um, as a new council person um, using plain language. It's super helpful and I know that a lot of people in the community really like it when the presentations are presented this way and in a, you know in a way that everybody can wrap their head around what is um, being shared. So thank you again for that. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Donna. Well, also wonderful presentation, Kate, but we also owe you appreciation 
for how much information you shared during the budget time trying to explain the energy coordinator position. So we're all looking forward to that one. So thank you. Yeah, I guess I also just want to say how satisfying it is to set goals and then see us make progress towards them. I find that incredibly gratifying and is one of the reasons why, well, first of all, why I you know, always appreciate this presentation, but it's also motivational, like that idea of making progress towards goals. Um, it does just apply to energy. It applies to like all the things in um, city government. And I, I really um I appreciate when we can see that progress. It's, it's wonderful. Um, other thoughts or comments, and this includes the public. I know it's too bad most of the other things that we work on aren't as easily graphed. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're as important, but um, this is something that's a very tangible metric. Yeah, yeah. Great, anyone else? Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Kate, um, for your presentation and all your energy and work on this again. Um, and we're going to move on to um, the Is it discussion. time for a break? Oh, my gosh. I almost forgot. Good I can call. hear Peter. He knows. He knows. Peter does know. He does know. <laughs> He's here hanging out with us. Oh, 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 oh Peter. <laughs> He's, uh, anyway, so... Um, Let's take 10 minutes and we'll be back 8.31. Oh, Peter's waving. Bye, we'll see you in 10 <laughs> minutes. 8, 8.31, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, I think we are all here. That's great. Okay, so uh, thank you for that. Um, reminder to take the 10 minute break, that's great. Uh, okay, so we are up to the mask mandate extension, and the uh, I, I love that the recommended action here is uh, just discuss and decide <laughs> what do you want to do. That's great. Um, so, uh, Bill, is there anything you want to say in context for this? If not, that's fine. Um, well, I guess you know, as you know, the city was given the authority by the state to enact mask mandates on a local level and um, that with the proviso that they be renewed uh, every third, you know, first after 40 to five days and then 35 days, 30 days, excuse me. So you last um, enacted this on February 9. So it would expire this week if you take no action. Um, and so it's on the agenda to see whether you wish to continue, obviously. Things have changed since the last time we enacted this. The state is moving to an optional. Uh, nationally, things are changing. Uh, and I think Cameron may, I don't know. Are you are you raising your hand to add data, Cameron? Yeah, okay, so I'll turn it over to her. Um, Thank you. Um, since I wrote the memo and submitted it to y'all um, for this cover sheet, the state has announced that they will be um, stepping back their masking um, requirements on the 14th, and that wasn't included. Um, so what Bill just alluded to, I wanted to make sure you were aware of. Thank you. Um, I um, also got an email from Dan Groberg uh, this week saying uh, that the downtown um, majority of the uh, businesses downtown are hoping that we do not renew uh, the mask mandate. So um, with that in mind, um, thoughts folks have on extending or not. Um, Carrie, go ahead. Oh, and then Lauren. Uh, yeah. Thanks. I just also wanted to add that um, I've checked on the CDC website and they, they have Washington County as a medium transmission county rather than a high transmission county. And so we're not falling under the CDC recommendations for indoor masking currently. Okay, uh, Lauren, and then Connor. Yeah, I, I had looked at the same uh, data point because it was something that we had really relied on really, I think throughout this, we've been trying to follow 
the CDC and scientific guidance as best we can. So my inclination at this point is to let it lapse. I think it could be a tool we might need to use again. So if this is where kind of CDC federal guidance and state guidance is coming down from our public health experts, um, that is my inclination right now. Um, and again, you know, one, it's, if it sounds like the businesses and others are kind of having trouble enforcing it, I'd like to keep it in the toolbox for times if we see, you know, hopefully not, but if we see, um, you know, other times when we need to use it, that it goes back into effect and is effective as a tool um, because we're using it being driven just, by the science. To, to that point, Council Member Harrell and others, um, the authorization from the state for cities and towns to adopt these only ran to a time certain. I want to say April 1st, it might've been April 30, but uh, so it isn't necessarily a tool we'll have in our toolbox for a whole lot longer. So just, just to, to be clear, <laughs> unless the state reenacts the local government um, authorization. Yeah, I'm thinking more long-term that, that, that like, who knows what's going to happen over the next year or so, you know, a couple of years, whatever. So, um, but yes, true. Like, even if we did want to reauthorize, we only have a, really a, a few more weeks or till end of April um, to do it. But yeah, so that's, that's my current thinking. All right, Connor. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page. I, I think like masks are like the fullest extent of our powers as municipal officials. And I think like any like budgetary item, any, any item on the agenda tonight um, doesn't really hold a candle to like requiring like residents wear masks. And I, I think like we've stepped up where like the state has really shirked their responsibility. They, they've taken like a negligent patchwork approach, letting municipalities decide when really like a statewide mandate would have been necessary. So I, I, I like I agree, agree with Lauren. I think like COVID is like good chance it's going to continue being part of our reality for the next few months, maybe the next few years. It may necessitate like future mandates here. But as cases go down, I, I also think we should follow the science, you know, with the, the reports that came out. I think we need to listen to the community um, with Montpelier alive there. And, and we need residents to trust us um, in, in case there's a future need for a mandate. Um, currently, I'm just going to say, like, it's not being enforced. Some businesses are being openly defiant, calling City Hall, saying, we're not going to do it anymore. So we're on an island and we're making like life really difficult from like retail workers I've spoken to, food service workers. It's like monopolizing their day, just telling people, ah, you got to wear the mask. So I think it's time to take a pause, uh, make sure we retain the trust of the community. Uh, Brattleboro, I'll note, just like removed uh, their mandate, and they were one of the leaders on this issue going against the state. So like tonight, I, I would vote like not to renew it, not because I don't believe in mask mandates, but because I really do believe in mask mandates. And I think we need to do it sparingly and make sure we retain the trust there. Okay. Um, other thoughts? Uh, Donna? Well, if we decide not to renew it, we just let it lapse. We don't have, do we need a vote to, we just, we don't do anything. It'll expire on Friday the 11th, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's accurate. We, I think we could vote to repeal it early uh, if we wanted to, but we could just let it lapse. That's in a sense an easier thing to do, I suppose. Um, but uh, and any other thoughts from folks? Okay. Does anyone want to um, just, just uh, oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jack. Thanks. Um, I came into this really thinking the other way. I think that uh, the way we, the way Washington County got to from high down to medium was uh, <clears throat> in part by doing uh, prudent things like uh, getting people vaccinated and wearing masks. We've only been at the medium level for for two weeks. And so my inclination was to say that we should extend it one more time just to see, but I am, uh, I, I don't like wearing a mask out any more than anyone else. And so uh, I, I see that that's what the majority sense is on the council and I don't have a problem with that. 
Okay, um, thank you, Cameron. Hello, I am just letting you know that Stephen Whitaker is in the queue for public comments. Okay, Steve, go ahead. I guess she can mute me, but she can't unmute me. Um, I, I want to point out that uh, it's as far as Cameron's comment about trust, uh, it's too late for that. You've already lost it. And, you know, for the I warned you when you were doing this that there's no enforcement mechanism. And what you did is you shamed a lot of folks like at Shaw's. And yet you ignored, you know, three penny with people five, six deep yelling in each other's face, you know, one foot apart uh, without all without masks. So you've made a real farcical uh, embarrassment out of the whole thing. And now you're trying to pretend that you're in a safe face here. Uh, so uh, no pun intended there. Uh, but it's time to you, you would be wise to vote it uh, ends tonight. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, all right. And any other comments from Council uh, or otherwise? Welcome to public. Okay. Um, all right. So I don't think that we need to have a motion. Um, would anyone like to make one? Yes, Jack. I move we terminate the uh, mask order effective immediately. Ooh. I'll second. Okay. It's been a motion and a second. Um, further discussion? Okay, I'm not seeing any, or the or, uh, public is welcome to comment as well. Okay. I just want to pause in here to make sure no one wants to say anything. Um, okay, uh, terminating it immediately. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Ooh, uh, and opposed. Okay, sounds like it is unanimous. So we are terminating that immediately. Um, Jack. It, thank you. It raises the question of what the status is of uh, the requirement in city of Montpelier buildings. Yes, I agree. Um, now, yes, uh, build thoughts. Oh, well, I was actually just scratching my head, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our, you know, we've been trying to follow the, the mandate. So, um, you know, we're some of the requirements that employers were able to have are also being relaxed. So we're, we're just following those same guidelines. So my sense is those would be relaxed, you know, are off as of now, since you just voted. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. If, you have the sense, well, is it, would any, anybody interested in keeping um, the mass I mean, yes. requirement? So you, we could, I mean, you could keep something imposed in city For just buildings. city buildings. That is your authority as the right. agents of the owners. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on that team? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Uh, comments on keeping the mass requirement for city buildings. Um, I, I just want to make a note, Bill, if you uh, note that there's um, a desire to have that for city buildings, um, please let, let us know and we can take it back up. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to move on then. Um, so the next item is uh, the proclamation for uh, Meals on Wheels. Uh, this, uh, this being a um, Meals on Wheels, uh, I'm sorry, March, March for Meals Month. Um, so yeah, March for Meals. All right, so um, there is uh, the, the proclamation there and Sarah Lipton was here, but I don't see her here with us now. Uh, Bill or Cameron, anything you want to say about this? Yes, I'd love to. Um, so Sarah, since her apologies for not being able to be here, she has two uh, small young children. So um, it is definitely their bedtime. 
So uh, just so you're aware, we have had a very successful year so far since we've transitioned to taking our Meals for Wheels program in-house with our own chef and our own kitchen providing those meals. Um, our, uh, I will have data for you shortly, but we have had exponential growth in our references and people being referred and wanting to be part of our Meals on Wheels program. It's been a really important part of the city um, for many years. I can't, we were trying to dig into the history of it and it's passed through hands for a long time. Um, over the last 25 years, I think it's been out of the city in some capacity. So um, I probably am not speaking entirely accurately on the history there, but it goes to show that this program has been important to our community for a long time. I really recommend to everyone, please um, look out for our um, announcement on the events we have for March for Meals. We have some really excellent, fun events that include a concert, a whole host of other activities, and amazing food. Uh, we have a wonderful chef. Shalanda is incredibly gifted, and the food is amazing, no matter what stage of life you're in. So I just want to say thank you for continuing support of this really, really vital project and program for a lot of people in our community. And I um, hope to see you all at some of our March for Meals events. So thank you for um, uh, reading this proclamation. Yeah, thank you. All right, is uh, Donna, yes. We need a motion. I make a motion that yes. we get off this proclamation, March, 2022 as the March for meal months. Okay, and is there a second? A second. Okay, the motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Okay, um, before we do though, I just wanna um, remind folks of Sarah's invitation to uh, deliver a meal uh, March, during the week of March 21st. Um, sign up to help participate. Uh, so um, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, super. Um, thank you. Um, it's great. All right, and we, so we're ready to, to move on to the first reading of uh, the um, temporary public, or yeah, uh, parklet ordinance. Um, Bill, anything you want to say about this? Yeah, we talked about this, I think, at the last meeting um, about how to proceed with the parklet program and the conclusion of the then sitting council was that you wanted to renew you, the temporary ordinance that we've had for the last couple of years um, while we worked on a more permanent ordinance. So it, it, this, as you know, the temporary ordinance has a begin and end date, so it has already expired from last year. So this would be re-upping it for this next season. Uh, so it requires a first and second reading. So this is the first reading, the next meeting would be, uh, uh, next reading would be at the next meeting. And at some point, hopefully this spring, and I shouldn't even say hopefully, we will have it by the spring, we'll have a, a permanent version for you that would take effect, you know, after this temporary one expires for, so that people going forward know what the, the rules are and how many more, uh, spaces can be used and all those kinds of things. Okay, so and just to make sure we're clear on this, this is just the temporary one. We'll be looking at a more permanent one later on. Uh, so I'm gonna officially open the public hearing on this. Um, thoughts, comments? Uh, Lauren and then Connor, is that a hand? Okay, go, go ahead, Lauren. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I fully support doing this. I think it's been great for the community and for businesses. Um, my only questions were um, the dates. I thought last year we had done it earlier than May 1st. Um, so I was, was wondering if we might wanna look at an earlier date, like April 15th or, I can't even remember if we had done April 1st. First last year, I feel like we we did it ambitiously early and extended it longer. Um, That's right. So, West Hamilton so. Prod promised to plow out parking spaces. <laughs> right, he was going to get out there with a shovel oh. and do it. <laughs> um, so I might propose. Oh, it looks like Cameron might have an answer to what we had done last year or thinking. I, th um, I think she's raising her hand for 
Steve. For Steve. Okay. Um, so I might propose like April 15th. Um, and then my only question had to do with, so like, it looks like the last line says there's no fees, but people can be kind of grandfathered in. Like at this point, nobody's paying fees anymore. Just wanna make sure it's in fair playing field. Okay. That, those were my only thoughts. Okay, great. Um, Connor. And uh, Lauren stole my thunder there. I, uh, yeah, I totally, uh, you know, I'd support April 15th. And yeah, just, just saying city, city staff here, it's, um, I think it's been a real game changer for some businesses in town. Um, like one restaurant in particular was saying, not last year, but the year before, 80% of their business was done in a parklet. Um, so it could very well mean the difference between some businesses surviving or not in this climate. So definitely support it. Super. Um, any other counselor want to make a comment on this? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so Cameron, I assume you are raising your hand because Steve would like to speak. Yes. Okay, Steve, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. So uh, I have raised these issues and concerns repeatedly, and they've never been addressed. The uh, issue with, well, one, this first public hearing is not warned properly 48 hours in advance. It was warned. I downloaded an agenda today, and it said second reading. If this is the first reading, you haven't warned it properly. Uh, secondly, the issue it has to do with grandfathers, grandfathering, because you left too much discretion or you, yeah, you allowed blanket discretion to the city manager who allowed building in a fire lane. And that's a fire lane is not a parking spot. So you've, I've raised this prior and it's not been discussed or addressed or resolved. So I want to make damn sure that the, you're not blocking fire lanes with, you know, grandfather discretion here. And secondly, you still haven't addressed the issue of a taking of public property for private use when the store is not open. Those uh, properties are that those public properties are supposed to be available to the public. And you've hit repeatedly had folks stacking chairs and tables and blocking access and chaining across walkways, et cetera. And that's just not OK. You cannot allow, you know, the public property be taken for private purposes uh, just be through sloppy management. So those are two very important issues that need to get discussed probably before your first reading, which might necessarily and legally need to happen at the next meeting. Thanks. Um, thank you. Yes, uh, Bill, go ahead. Sure, a couple of things. First of all, we don't actually require two readings for ordinances. Um, we do it as a, as a courtesy. So there's no legal requirement for that. An ordinance can be adopted at a meeting at a single public hearing. Um, the, the current agenda that I have says first reading, I'd have to go back and look and see why an early one may have said second, um, but it's irrelevant. Uh, I mean, other than it doesn't look good. Secondly, this isn't the first time this person has raised the issue of a fire lane. And after, after the last time we had the fire chief go out and inspect and look, and there are no blocked fire lanes at all um, by parklets. So um, I don't know what he's talking about, but we are certainly very conscious we would not allow one in a fire line. Okay, great, thank you. Um, all right, any other comments or questions? Okay, uh, so I am gonna close the public hearing on this and uh, move on to, um, uh, is there a, actually I guess we, um, we probably for the uh, next, uh, reading, we could use a motion for a second reading. Um, Cameron. I just wanted to acknowledge that um, Steve was continuing to try to talk and I did mute him. So if you want to recognize again, that is obviously your prerogative. Um, I, I think we're, we're going to move on, um, but uh, thank you. Um, yes, Bill. Well, only if you want to amend the date, you could, you could pass the first okay. reading and amend the date. Um, uh, I will leave that to you, Council. What do you want to do, Con uh, Donna? No, no, I was just following Bill and Lauren's suggestion of passing the first reading with the insertion of April 15th 
for May 1. Second. Second. Okay, um, motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Okay, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, great. Um, all right, so uh, police review committee uh, scheduling recommendation. Uh, so there's a number of items that um, we have yet to take up from the police review committee. And so we've got a um, potential way they could, um, we've, we've laid them out or it's been proposed that we lay them out um, for the uh, next few months. Um, either uh, just to, to check in, uh, Bill or Cameron, would you like to say anything about this or Jack or Lauren, since you're on the police review committee? So uh, we'll just weigh in um, very briefly that, you know, at an, the last time the we had an update with the police chief and with uh, Alyssa Sharon, who had been the chair of the committee, uh, was I think in February, Mayor, when you were still out and just gave an update on all the things that had been done and those that hadn't been done. And it was clear there were four or five issues, five or six issues that really required the council to take on more so than staff to do. And so uh, the, the council said, you know, we would like to schedule these just so we don't, we have them on the list. So we took a crack at it and laid out a potential schedule with the idea of, you know, moving them along so that we can get on to other things, uh, you know, decide what we're going to do. And if there's, for, you know, follow up action from those um, and, you know, try to wrap it up before the summer vacation period hits. But we did not consult with um, Alyssa or anyone else. And I know, I know Lauren didn't send out um, but some potential changes. We have no problem with those. It was just really, we were looking at which ones to group together. The ones we thought might be more challenging and really needed their own night versus the ones that might not. And, you know, lay them, lay them all out, but really, however you council want to tackle it, we're, we're ready to go. Great. Um, thoughts, uh, Lauren, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so I had uh, wanted to check in with Alyssa knowing in particular as chair of that and as a conduit to like the way we had done our work, different people had really dove into different issue areas. So wanting to make sure that those folks could participate. So um, I had just working with her. So like, she's not what isn't available that first April date. So I'm going to email you, but I'll read it out. So people who um, are not there um, had worked on a schedule that would work for her. It's very similar to what the staff put together. It does space it out just a little bit. Cause I think the conversations, um, you know, I think they will take a little time and the dates, this just kind of puts them one per meeting. I know that some of these would probably take multiple meetings. And so I think at some point we might wanna decide, do we wanna work simultaneously or just work through one issue at a time and close it down? <laughs> um, but so this would propose just kind of keeping on pace to be bringing up different issues, but not overloading us. Cause it's mostly would be, I think different people and different expertise speaking to the different issues. Um, so this, so what I uh, proposing for a slight change is the first um, conversation or uh, agenda items to be changing the minimum standards for officer recruitment and public drinking on April 27th, then sex work recommendations on May 11th, then fair and impartial policing on May 25th, um, and finally the internal affairs citizen complaints conversation and um, do we want to create a civilian Montpelier Police Advisory Committee um, June 8th? And then I just put on there that it would be great to also build in a check-in on all of the ongoing great work that the department's doing on the whole suite of other recommendations we got an update on in February, because there were a lot of kind of ongoing work there. So it'd be great to, to see progress, um, you know, this summer. So that's my proposal. Great. Um, so it sounds like um, all of the, well, so 
switches around a couple, but mostly pushes them back. Uh, is that sort of a fair way to, to push the it? start back a little bit? And then there were a couple that were lumped yeah. together that it has one at a time that right. I think in and of themselves could be pretty robust conversations right. and knowing every meeting we have lots of topics besides right. police review committee recommendations. So yeah, um, was just trying to be cognizant of what I thought could bring in um, okay. a lot of kind of public comment and stuff. Um, any thoughts on that, on, on what Lauren is saying there, either Bill or Cameron? That's fine with you? Okay, great. I mean, my biggest thing, I'm, I'm just hoping to avoid conflicts. And, and actually, Lauren, you had two on the same day. Can you say what those two were again? The, there's two that are have two. Um, okay. uh, the first one, changing mini, minimum standards for officer recruitment. I think that would likely be a pretty brief discussion. Um, and then public drinking, I think will be an interesting one. Although I, I think actually could be less controversial than some of the other ones. So I thought we could, those two, um, we could probably have time to do on the same night. And then the final one um, was internal affairs and and then that was just, do we want to create a new, um, like reconstitute the police review committee or, or a new police advisory committee, um, which seemed appropriate at whatever our last one is, is like, because there were a lot of issues that we had flagged as that we didn't get to. And um, yeah. I, I know the chief had noted like whatever legislation passes this year, there's often then like work that communities have to do to actually implement those new laws. And of course there's a lot of kind of criminal justice reform laws um, in action at the state house this year. So th those are the two that are the two dates that have um, okay. things lumped together. Well, and it makes sense to me that, you know, if, if that's the last one and it just on the court, by the course of discussion, it becomes clear that like, we, we don't have time to do both. We could probably separate them out if we needed to. Um, okay. Other thoughts on this. Jack. I'll just mention as the other council representative on the committee that Lauren and I talked uh, earlier about her idea, and I think it uh, it makes total sense. And still, the uh, residents of Montpelier will see that we're making uh, concrete uh, process progress on the uh, on the tasks that we had set out for ourselves. And so, I think it's. Perfectly responsible way to approach it. Okay. Um, other thoughts on this? Okay. Oh, getting some thumbs up. That's great. Um, oh, more thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I think especially if. Um, you know, there's no objection from staff. I don't see any reason to not go with uh, what uh, Lauren's laid out. So um, let's see, do, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a motion on this. Uh, we probably don't need one necessarily, but it doesn't hurt. Um, would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, go ahead, Lauren. Go ahead, Lauren. Go ahead. Um, so I move that we um, adopt the schedule laid out as described. And Crystal, I can forward that to you, or if Bill or Cameron can make sure you get the that it was all written out, so you don't <laughs> have to transcribe that. Um, does that give you enough for minutes? I imagine we'll so. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Okay. Great. Okay, great. Uh, I'll second. And is there a second. Okay, there's motion and a second further discussion. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Thank uh, you, Lauren. Yes, yes. Um, and thank you for keeping the uh, police review committee in touch along with all of us to make sure that they could stay involved. It's great. Uh, all right, so that is the end of our regular business for the day, for, for today. That is excellent. Whew, okay, so now we just uh, need to go through some uh, council reports. So just for new folks, some context about this. Um, this is an opportunity for counselors to um, 
bring up anything that you just um, want us to know if there's upcoming events or um, if you or or past events that you want us to know um, happened or uh, if you were appointed to a committee and they have met and you want to uh, let us know what they are discussing, uh, this is a time that you can do that uh, or, or really anything else, honestly. <laughs> um, it's, it, all, it all goes. So, uh, and I am going to go in the order in which you would be sitting, I think, um, if we were in person. Uh, just because I can't think about it any other way. Uh, Donna, you, you good for going first? Okay, I, I have two things. One is to let you know as a council that the next meeting, you're going to have a short presentation from a joint sub subgroup that's been working on implementing what was recommended in a Main Street, Berry Street corridor study. And within that study, we have a traffic light, which was one of the bond issues going in between Barry and Main Street. Also, there's a two lane bike lane that's gonna go in, it's a two way bike lane. So, uh, uh, I don't know, about a six foot bike lane is shared by going both directions on Barry Street. It starts at where it junctions with Main Street. It goes down Barry Street on the south side down to the rec department. Because then the rec department has a little alleyway where you go and you connect with the shared youth path. And that's going to happen this summer, thanks to working with Local Motion in Burlington. And uh, Corey has connected with DPW, and they feel they have the staffing to help with aligning. But you'll hear all about this in detail. We want to make sure to remind the public that the study happened and decisions were made how to do this and get people's heads up before it's actually intimate, implemented. So that'll be happening on the 23rd. And also to let you know, um, some staff members are already aware, Central Vermont Public Safety Authority is now unfortunately one member less. Capital Fire and Mutual Aid System has decided to withdraw from the Public Safety Authority. So we now have just the membership of Barry and Montpelier. And this group, the board of the Public Safety Authority meets tomorrow night and is looking how it still wants to advance the RFP to to outline the equipment needed to get the whole region updated for its radio system. So good news, bad news. Thank you. Can I ask you a question, Donna? Yes. Um, about the uh, shared use path that's going in on Berry Street. Uh, I assume we're gonna need to have some public hearings on ordinance changes for parking. Uh, no. No, oh, okay. it's, it's, it's what it's doing is it's taking up parking spaces. Yep. We'll cover the parking meters. Okay. No parking. We'll put in cones and painting, but no, it's just a short term demo. Okay. Okay. It's a stop gap measure to, to try it out before we actually implement the, the actual implementation would be a shared use path instead of the sidewalk will be broadened this temporary stop gap is down okay. on the level of cars, vehicles. Right. Okay. So we'll, we'll have to put a protection barrier lining. Right. Okay. But as a good know, comment, we did look into it, but. Okay. No, uh, that's, that's helpful. And the, do you have anticipate, you know, when that will start? Well, we're hoping June 15th, uh, but, okay. but we'll know more about that when we talk to you on the 23rd. Okay. And we'll also okay. have our price things priced out, some of our equipment that we need to do it, like the cones. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Connor. <coughs> All right, let's talk wacky tobacco for a minute. Uh, you may see an <laughs> article coming down the bridge about the future of retail cannabis, Montpelier. As you know, not last town meeting day, but the one before, uh, Montpelier overwhelmingly supported the idea of allowing retail cannabis Within, within, within the municipality. Um, at the moment, uh, Patients Alliance, which is on River Street um, over by Bare Naked Growler, um, as far as I know, is the only one like really looking to like set up in city limits. There's potential for them to uh, actually flip the switch on May 1st, which would allow folks who have uh, provided medical cannabis before to switch to that integrated license. I think that's unlikely just talking to them because um, 
we're waiting for the labs to set up in Vermont and get tested. And I don't think that's going to be online before May 1st. So it's probably a later date. But what you might see is in the uh, legislation currently pending in the state house, it does allow for municipalities to set up a local cannabis commission. It's kind of unclear what the authority would be um, for the municipality in that case, because you do have the, the state cannabis board who, who would be able to like sort of override anything like that. So gonna, gonna like pay attention to more details of that coming up. Um, I, I haven't heard it being terribly controversial about like Patients Alliance, like switching to the retail shop there. I think like, you know, the culture of the town won't change too much. It'll still be the same location. Um, there might be more traffic there, but we, we've had a good relationship with that business like up until now. Um, see, you, you might not see too much change, but it might be worth like taking the temperature of the community in the meantime to see if we want any sort of like local um, control over this. Um, so, so we'll just keep you posted. I, I was going to ask around on folks who had like concerns on Front Porch Forum there. Uh, to see what they thought. But I, I think we have to see how it plays out in the legislature. So that's it for me. Great. Thank you. All right, Carrie, go ahead. Well, um, I don't have any big reports to make other than okay. I'm really glad to be here. And I just kind of wanted to thank uh, all the people who voted and um, thank people for the opportunity to be here and part of this group. And thank all of you for the warm welcome. Super. All right, Jennifer. Hi, did I unmute myself? Yes. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I can't figure out this iPad. Anyways, um, I don't have anything to report other than thank you to all the voters um, who went out and voted. And um, I really look forward to um, chatting with the CAN folks, Peter and all them and getting to know my neighborhood and my constituents. Great, super, thank you. Uh, Jack. Thank you, just a couple of things. <clears throat> One, um, I appreciate the very informative uh, posts by the uh, manager about the voter turnout and uh, historical trends. And I think it's been helpful to understand what what the phenomena are about uh, voter turnout in Montpelier. Um, <clears throat> I suspect we would have had a higher turnout if, as we discussed this leading up to the election, if Roxbury Select Board had voted to allow mail-in balloting for the Mon Montpelier-Roxbury Montpelier Public School vote, then we would have had mail-in voting universally in our town and I, I think our turnout would have been higher um, <clears throat> but it was a reasonably good turnout by uh, by our standards and certainly better than uh, many other communities um, also connected to the election I'm very pleased to see the uh, dialogue starting right away about what to do with the country club, club road property and I hope everybody who is interested in the future of that property and the community will uh, will participate so we can get a, a plan that will best serve the uh, interests and needs of the community for generations into the future. And finally, I was approached by, uh, by two different people in, in the last couple of weeks who wanted to tell me how great they think the, uh, the services from the Department of Public Works have been. And they, there are people who, uh, both people who live on, uh, in, in difficult locations, who've had communications with the department and, or just observed where they live that, uh, the snow removal and the work that the DPW crews have done has been great. And so I encourage them to tell, uh, to contact the, uh, the department, but I also want to say, you know, we hear a lot about uh, what's negative when, th when things go wrong. And so I'm uh, 
happy to say that the their good work is being recognized. And that's what I've got, what I've got. Yeah, cool, thank you. Uh, Lauren. Yeah, thank you. Um, just two quick things. Um, first, just, I missed the last meeting. I imagine this came up, but just, I know a lot of my thoughts are with the people of Ukraine and um, just encouraging people. There've been a lot of good posts of places you can donate and support. And I think, you know, to our earlier conversation on energy, watching gas prices skyrocket and trying to get off fossil fuels and stop being beholden to global markets that the whims of um, autocrats around the globe can impact our energy prices is putting us in a perilous situation that's harming the most vulnerable in our community. So just another reason to uh, make the transition to clean energy and, um, and you know, again, just thinking of the people in Ukraine and what we can do from here to support them. Um, and then just wanted to like everyone thank the voters for turning out overwhelmingly supporting the budget, um, the support for the bond items. I'm a big fan of mail-in voting, but it was really fun to see lots of people at the polls um, and thanks to the volunteers that showed up um, to work at the polls. Um, I got a lot of great input on the CAN candidate forum. Um, so that was a great service and hope that those continue in the future. Um, and really excited for the Elks Club public hearing um, coming up right away as a starting point for lots of really exciting conversations about the opportunities there. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Um, my uh, heart is just broken over um, what we're seeing coming out of Ukraine, but also want to acknowledge that there are a lot of uh, wars, other wars around the world that are um, that are also happening and are also terrible. Um, and um, you know, I'm glad that we uh, have a history of hosting refugees in Montpelier. And I know that we would uh, continue to welcome um, refugees um, from Ukraine or any country um, here in Montpelier as we have uh, capacity. Um, so uh, uh, beyond that, I also want to thank uh, the voters for um, their confidence in reelecting me um, <laughs> for another two years. And uh, also grateful that um, all the items uh, passed. And uh, I want to let folks know that I'm going to continue to hold office hours uh, available on Sunday afternoons at 2 p.m. Uh, and if anyone is interested in joining me for those office hours, just email me and I will send you a link. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm just avoiding posting the link <laughs> generally publicly. But if, if you're interested, email me and we'll, we'll connect um, Sundays at 2 uh, also, um, a couple people have mentioned the upcoming forum on uh, the Elks Club property. Uh, I'm going to have a hard time switching uh, what we call it. For some reason, I, I don't know, just calling it the Elks Club property is, I don't know, maybe I just like the image of Elks. But anyway, um, uh, that I just want to make sure that people know that uh, there's a forum for uh, brainstorming and an input. Uh, we want to hear from the public about what they would like to see happen on that property. And that is going to be next Tuesday at 6.30. Uh, it is just a, a virtual meeting. So um, not in person. We'll, uh, we'll be doing this uh, sort of format again for that. And uh, yeah, that's, um, I think that is it for me. Uh, all right, so I think next we are going to Crystal. Um, I just wanted to, again, thank you for, um, thanks to all the volunteers that came out and helped on election day. It was, you know, such important work and they're just so great. And I also want to remind everybody that the water and sewer bills are due next Tuesday on the 15th. Great. Thank you, uh, Bill. That's it. Um, just quickly, uh, I was mentioned earlier today, um, just to mention that we do typically do a follow-up um, for items that come up under general business in the weekly memo each, each week. Uh, so stuff that's raised, we 
we try to keep a status of what's happened with that. Uh, so it's there for all to see. And the only other thing I have is um, you had tentatively planned or had voted to hold the next meeting also remote, but with the change in the mask ordinance, I just want to make sure or the mask mandate to see what your, your desires were for our next meeting. That is a good question. Um, thoughts, team. I, I can see it going either way. Well, I guess my number one concern, Anne, as a young a mother with a young baby, how comfortable you are with in-person meetings. Um, I will, I would be okay. It will be okay. Um, and, and Jennifer was the other one uh, who had a, a lot of difficulties. I mean, because you can still wear a mask, but right. you had a lot of difficulties with masks. So yeah, I, 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 I will be okay. Okay. Um, yeah, because one thought is that I, so one reason to, to stay remote is that we had voted to to go remote and um, so it's consistent with that that decision. Uh, but I think it is probably better to like for the sake of democracy to be back in person and uh, yeah, so I, I, I think that is probably more um, important. Um, and I'm gonna think about whether or not I might ask the people on either side of me to wear masks. I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that with, with my family, see what, what we think about that. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll go Carrie and then uh, Vicki and Lane. Yeah, my, I just have a question whether people um, would have the ability to attend by Zoom if they needed to for whatever reason. It's a great question. Uh, yes. So we, when we were in person a little while ago, we also kept the uh, virtual option. And I imagine we're going to continue that on into the future uh, because it does expand the capacity of uh, people's ability to participate. So. That's, that's yeah. our plan as long as the council wants to have it. Okay. Uh, Vicki, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that I really think you should be in person. I'm sorry for your loss. That's okay. all. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, okay. So I, because we had a vote to be remote for the month of March, uh, seems like we could use a vote to undo that. Donna. Well, since I made the other motion, I'll make this one that uh, I'll make a motion that we meet in person on March 23rd. I miss you, Donna. I'll second that one. <laughs> <laughs> side by side. You just like sitting next to short people. I know. No, it's always been you and me, Donna. <laughs> hey. All right. Um, okay. So there's a motion and there was a second, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay. So we'll see you in person on the 23rd. Very exciting. Um, that'll, be, that'll be different. <laughs> uh, okay. I think that is it then. Um, uh, Jack. Thanks. I just since John's not here, I'll just remind the council that there are going to be items to be signed over at the police department. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, okay. Anything else? Okay. So without objection, uh, we will adjourn the meeting. Nine twenty-four.